Hi, everyone. My name is Dan Turley, and I'm a full stack developer at Avanade. Um, I've been working with SharePoint for over 10 years, starting with SharePoint 2010. I've been involved in projects ranging from building public websites for businesses on SharePoint to solutions for external business partner access to SharePoint sites. And now with the Productivity Studio, utilizing SharePoint framework to build business apps. I am here today to present our SPFX Solution Accelerator. It is a set of patterns, reusable code, components, and tools I created for building business apps on the SharePoint platform. It has evolved over the last six years, and we have used it in the Productivity Studio to build a dozen business apps over that time. The Accelerator is now open source, and we have published a complete app to demonstrate the features and functionality. The app is the Rhythm of Business Calendar, and the SharePoint Framework sample is named React Rhythm of Business Calendar. What I'm planning to present today is an overview of our SPFX Solution Accelerator, a quick demo of the Rhythm of Business Calendar app, and a brief look at some of the source code. So these are the high-level features of the Accelerator. We have guidelines for a solution structure to organize your entity domain model, services, components, and schema, which is your data layer, which is typically SharePoint lists. The entity domain model has features like change tracking, validation, and relationships. And relationships are defined between entities, and we support one-to-many as well as many-to-many. We also have a services framework with provided services for SharePoint list data, time zones, users and groups, and more. These services utilize the PMP JS library for making REST calls to the SharePoint APIs. You can also define services specific for the application that you're building. And those services can specify dependencies on other services and the framework will take care of initializing them in parallel as much as possible while respecting any dependencies. Uh, we also have dynamic provisioning of SharePoint lists and other resources, which is very useful for building rich setup and upgrade experiences for your app. And next we have React components for building uh, view and edit experiences with panels or dialogues. Uh, there's a component for handling asynchronous data uh, we have controls to implement live update scenarios and more. We also have tooling to support development teams and environments. So this includes additional gulp tasks for packaging and deploying a clean build of the solution to a site or a tenant app catalog using a single command. And we have an environments file, which is used to define different builds of the app. So you can provide unique names and GUIDs for web parts and the solution package as well as other resources, which enable teams to deploy a dev, test, and even a production version of the app to a single tenant or even a single site collection without causing any conflicts. And last but not least, we have a unique feature we call Live Update, which ensures users are always collaborating with the latest data. And we think this is an especially cool feature that is similar to a co-authoring experience and we will definitely want to do a deep dive on it at a later date. All right, now let me demo a sample app that we built using this accelerator. So some quick context. The app that we built is the Rhythm of Business Calendar, and it helps you keep track of your business goals by managing team events. You can coordinate and plan with your team easily using color-coded events, approval workflow, refiners, and confidential events. The app is perfect for people who manage a team calendar, like chiefs of staff or executive assistants, and it can be used in SharePoint or in Teams. All right, let me bring up the web page. Okay, here I have a SharePoint site for Contoso Retail, and I have a page where I've added the Rhythm of Business Calendar app. Let me expand the screen here. Here we have the initial view which is a standard calendar layout for the current month. We also have, over here we have custom refiners that we've defined. We have two refiners, team and type, along with their values. The team refiner uses colors 
And you can see that the events are color coded on the calendar. Um, I can also select or deselect and select these to filter my calendar view. Um, from another machine, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a colleague create another refiner. And in a moment, we'll get to see one aspect of the live update feature that I mentioned a moment ago. So give me one second to trigger that. So in addition to the month view, we also have a day view, a week view, and a quarter view, which shows all of the events for a particular quarter. Actually, let me make this view a little more interesting. Um, as an admin, I can go into settings, and I have lots of settings I can play with. The thing I'm going to do here is to group this view by uh, one of the refiners. I'm going to choose type. And now you can see the events are, are grouped by month and also by the type refiner. So if you have a lot of events, this really is a neat way to be able to organize them on the screen. Oh, and I also want to show that this app is fully responsive. So you could use this from a mobile device as well. All right, now did anyone notice there's a new refiner down here? for country that we didn't have a moment ago. So my colleague added this and it loaded up on my screen and I didn't have to refresh the page. Now if I open the edit panel for this, these are properties that I can change for a refiner. And because I'm an admin, I'm allowed to update the refiners. And you'll see this icon in the corner. This indicator shows me who added the item and how long ago. So this live update works across entity relationships. And there's even an experience at the field level that can show you the original value, um, your colleagues recent change, and any unsaved edits if you are currently making changes. All right, um, let's cover a few points of interest in the source code now. So we have here a standard SPFX scaffolded solution with React, TypeScript, and Fluent UI. And we have the web part file here. And what I want to show you is how clean and minimal this file is. For this particular app, we didn't need any web part properties, but we could use that too. All we're doing here is passing the web part context to this rhythm of business calendar app component which is the root of our application. So let's take a look at this component. So this is the root component for our app. And what I want to show you is at the top here, this is a way of defining the services that this app will use. A lot of these are services provided by the accelerator. Some of these are custom services built just for this application. And if we scroll down here to the render method, you'll see what this component does is utilize this SharePoint app component. This is part of the accelerator. And what this does is it takes in the web part context, any services that you want to use, and other info, and it does all the initialization for you. So it configures the PNP.js library. It initializes the services for other components to consume, and it even displays a customizable shimmer while things are, are being set up. OK, so I want to go through a little bit more about the folder structure. So we've seen the standard web parts folder for an SPFX solution. Up here, I have the common folder. This is all of the reusable code and components for the accelerator. Here are some services that are provided with the accelerator. For instance, the SharePoint service is an abstraction for loading and saving data to lists. We have a live update service. And the developer service is a useful little service that registers helper scripts uh, that you can then run from the DevTools console on a Workbench page. Next up, we have the components folder. And this is for all of your React components that are specific to this solution. 
Then we have the model folder. This is where you would define all of your entities for your application. And I want to look at one of these in a moment. Next is the schema folder. This is where you would define uh, all of your elements, so lists and so forth, that need to be provisioned for the app. And lastly, there's a services folder. This is where you define any custom services for this application. Uh, since this is a calendar app, naturally we have an event service. All right, so let me show you an entity. So this is the refiner value, which represents a single value for a refiner. Uh, from the demo, the refiner we saw, the, the live update one was named country, and some of the refiner values were United States, Canada, Mexico, etc. So an instance of this refiner value entity might be, uh, say, for Canada. And what you'll notice here is that we've gathered all of the fields for the entity into this state interface, where normally you might think we would have fields at the class level. And I want to show you, we have here some simple getter and setter properties for these fields. Now, the reason that we use this pattern is for the change tracking feature. So we can actually take a copy of the internal state of the entity. And then as the user is making edits to fields on the screen, we can write those values directly from the input fields to the properties on the entity and update the current state. Then we can compare the previous state, the copy that we made, to the current state and we can determine if the user has made any changes. And from that, we can drive those nice UI experiences. And this capability is also integral to the live update feature. All right, next, I would like to show you a loader. This lives in the folder for our custom events service. Now, the purpose of a loader is to transform data to and from a data source to an entity object. So here we have a special kind of loader for SharePoint list views. And you'll notice above are two functions that we use to perform the mapping from the raw data that we receive from SharePoint APIs to a rich entity that has business logic that we can uh, leverage throughout our app. And the last thing I want to show you is a list definition. So this lives under the schema folder, and this is used by our element provisioner to dynamically create a list on a SharePoint site. So you can see here we have definitions for the various fields this list will use. Uh, these are strongly typed. Here we have a view that we will create on the list. And down here we have the list definition where we can specify all the fields, the views, and even permissions. Okay, that is everything I have time for today. There's so much more that we want to show you, but it will have to wait for another day. Thank you so much for listening to my demo. Back to you, Paula. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. A really interesting demo.